one of the reasons why I like using Ableton is you can use it to make beats, you can record in it, you can mix in it, you can bring it onto the stage to perform. So if you make hip hop, no matter what you do in hip hop, it's a real useful tool. And because of that, if you collaborate, there's a very good chance that the person you're collaborating with, whether it's an engineer or a producer, it's a very good shot that they might have it too. And if you know how to properly export an Ableton session file, you can save yourself a lot of time in the back and forth, and you can have collaborations that are actually a lot more fruitful because you're all working within the same session, so to speak. So today we're gonna go over how you can take something you've worked on, whether you're a producer or an MC, and prepare the session so that you can send it to somebody else and they'll be able to open it up in their version of live no matter what. The song we're working with today is called Nookie. And the beat has three parts, which are below here, and a vocal. There's third party effects going on. There's a lot of stuff that we have to deal with before we send this over to somebody to work with. So today we're gonna pretend we're sending this file to a mixing engineer. Um, the first thing that I did, I did this already, but the first thing you always wanna do with your sessions is go to file, go to save a copy, save that copy and then open it up and that's going to be the version that we work from. You don't want to make any drastic edits. You don't want to start taking off plugins and bypassing things and renaming things if it's your master session, because if you mess up along the way, you can't go back. The first thing I want to deal with is the instrumentation. The drum rack that's on here is using nothing but Ableton tools. The drum rack is an Ableton plugin. So is the bit reducer. So I don't need to do anything to it for somebody to be able to open it up in their version alive. Same goes for this sampler channel. This is just a sample that I loaded up in Ableton's Simpler. Simpler is not a third party plugin, it's built into the DAW. So we don't need to do any further prep. This track should load up without any problems. But our bass track might cause some issues depending on who we're sending this to. So for bass on this track, I'm using the Arturia Mini V3. It's a Moog emulator. I love this bass, I use it on a lot of stuff. A lot of people have it, but when you're working with third parties, you can't assume they do. Same goes for these mixing plugins. I added R bass from Waves, which is awesome for bass, and a transient shaper. Um, now, in sending this to a third party engineer, I would assume they should be able to get some kind of mix that sounds like mine or better, so I shouldn't need to include these plugins. And as such, we're not going to include them in this version of the bounce. Before I start tweaking things, I should also say I've already bounced a version of this mix because this is the way I like it. It's the rough mix that I like. And if you're sending this over to an engineer, you wanna give them something to work with. But since we don't know if they have these plugins or not, we're gonna go ahead and disable them. I'm actually just gonna get rid of them all together for peace of mind. And we need to prepare this track so that it's raw audio, so that it can be opened up even if this person doesn't have the V3 plugin. So to do that, it's really easy. Right click the channel, hit freeze track, boom. And now Ableton has made an audio version of this file and it's disabled the plugin so that you can save some system processing, but we need that raw audio. So we're gonna right click again and now hit flatten. And that turns it into audio. It gets rid of the plugin altogether. This is now just a good old fashioned audio track that an engineer should be able to use and tweak accordingly. Cool, so we've got our drum rack, we've got our sample, we've got our bass. That's the beat in its entirety. There is some bus processing going on in this group. This group controls all the instruments, but these are just compressors um, and some mixing tools. And again, any engineer should be able to get us to a ballpark sound or better. So they shouldn't need me to keep these in here. And as such, we're gonna delete them. I can actually even take things a step further because since we were only using that group to house those effects, I can now ungroup these tracks. Okay, so the overall goal we're looking for here is to make this session a little bit easier to navigate, to make it make more sense. And by getting rid of some of these plugins and unnecessary buses, we're cleaning things up for the next person. Let's now start to work on these vocals. Now I made a vocal bus just to house everything on, but I only ended up using one vocal track. Um, so we'll actually be able to just ungroup and get rid of this bus altogether, and that'll leave us with the raw vocal. Now before I do that, I, I do wanna, just for fun, show you the before and after. Um, this vocal was done with the Slate ML1. So when you take the effects off and all the processing, it's a night and day difference. Uh, check it out. Cash app, be the numbers NASDAQ. And caught him slipping like the hash rap. Shorty different, she a mad stack. Told homie he's the only man, the only fans is mad pack. Whatever, can't blame her, can't tame her. Cocoa butter banger, she killing the game arena. She feeling the fame, shame on lames. Consider it payback for those that prey on dames. 
So the ML1 is a great mic, um, something I can't stress enough. You're going to be recording at lower volumes and then using the plugins to add gain down the line and get like a nice clean top end. If you really want me to get into the specifics of my vocal chain using the ML1, let me know in the comments. But like I said before, we are trying to prepare this for another engineer so they know what the vocal sounds like because we have a rough mix included. We shouldn't have to give them any of these vocal effects unless they ask for it. So I'm just going to get rid of them. Um, and doing so, I'll just get rid of that whole group. And we'll actually ungroup this vocal too. So again, we're getting rid of things we don't need because the engineer is going to be switching things out. We're getting rid of buses we don't need. We have some reverbs and delays that we're not going to need. And on our master bus, we have some plugins that we're not going to need. So this end result is going to sound a little worse. It's no longer mixed again, basically. But now we have a session that's almost ready to be packaged up and sent off. Next thing we want to do, super important. If you take anything from this video, take this. And that's going to file, going to collect all and save. If you've ever opened up a session that somebody sent you and it's missing media, odds are it's because they didn't take this step. What collect all and save does is it finds wherever all the samples and sound sources within your session are located in your computer and it pulls them into one folder. So when we then prepare this session, we know for a fact, no matter where things were located, they're contained and good to go. And if you're using cloud storage, if you're using Dropbox, if you're using external hard drives, this is really important because the media goes all over the place. So we've collected all and saved. We're ready to go. We're ready to bounce this thing down and make it another session. So you might think we'd be going to file and export. It's not the case. We're actually going to go to manage files. I'm gonna to go to manage project. And this gives us some basic information about the project itself, it tells us what it contains, 15 sets, there's no missing files. You always wanna make sure there's no missing files, it's very important. And at the bottom here, we have this button that says create pack. We're gonna use this to make a container package for our session. So I'll click that. And just for convenience sake, we'll put this in the same Ableton session folder. So Nookie container session, we'll call it that, and we'll hit save. And now Lab is making not an ALS file, but what's called an ALP file. And this is, for lack of a better comparison, it's kind of like making a zip file that will then unarchive and it'll contain the actual project and all of the media. So this has been successfully created. I'm gonna double click it. And Ableton is actually gonna ask me, where do I want to install the session file? So it's taken the container, it's saying, hey, there's a project in here. Where do you wanna put this project? I'm gonna put it onto your computer now. Now to avoid confusion, I'm gonna throw this onto the desktop. And I'm doing this so it doesn't load into where my other Ableton sessions are. I have my original session there and we don't wanna have any confusion. But you can put this file wherever you want. If I double click it, it has the original session, it has our for mixing session, which is what we've been working with, and it has all of the samples ready to go. So I can double click this session and it'll open up perfectly in Ableton, ready for us to use. There's a lot of flexibility. It's great to stay in the Ableton environment if you can. And I strongly encourage, especially MCs, to start learning how to package your sessions. So when you're collaborating with people, if you got two or three verses, you can have just one verse from you, send it off to somebody, they add their verse, send it off to the third party, they add their verse, it comes back to you, you can mix it, you can send it to an engineer, so on and so forth.